So today, I'm going to help you guys decide which class you might want to play when Revelation Online releases. I'm not going to give you an extremely detailed class breakdown of what each skill does for each class. I'll save that for class spotlight videos in the future. Remember, this game is not gender locked, and you control the build of each character down to every little stat. So let's jump right into it. For those of you who love playing tanks, you will love the Vanguard. Using a glaive and shield, the Vanguard can destroy enemies with powerful charged stabbed attacks or following up with a combo of quick stabs. It also has a defensive form that can help you mitigate damage and grab more aggro, as this will be your main job. There are even some skills that can only be used while in defensive stance. I've seen games that use the Trinity system before, tanks, healers, and DPS, and I feel like this game offers one of the best tank class designs I've ever seen. Revelation allows you to control your character's base stats, so maybe you want to play a vanguard but you don't want to be the designated tank, or you are more into DPS and unique builds. Well, you can focus on your attack power and change this class's playstyle. The next class we have is the Sword Mage, one of my personal favorites. Don't let the name or weapon fool you. This is a ranged class, a spellcaster. For the basic attacks, you can throw an elemental orb at the enemy and shoot these powerful fireballs. With the Sword Mage, you can change your selected element at any time. This affects quite a few of your abilities, including your basic attacks. One of my favorite skills is the elemental shuriken the Sword Mage throws. This class allows for good range kiting and has a few escapes, being a teleport and an attack that lets you jump back while doing arcane damage. The Sword Mage is also very good for CCs, freezing its enemies in place. One of its ult changes based off of your elements from causing a line of lightning that deals damage in the area for a few seconds, a huge fireball, or a streak of ice spikes. If you love mage gameplay and want to DPS, this class might be the one for you. Let's talk about the Occultist, also known as the Necromancer. I'm sure a lot of you want to play this class just based off the weapon, name, and looks. The Necromancer is a good DPS class but can also be used as support. The Necro can become a healer as well. However, relying on Necro as the only healer in a dungeon won't be very smart until maybe late game. You can customize a Necro to main healing over DPS, but that won't be till later down the line. This class can be very useful in group fights and in dungeons for the off heals to keep your allies buffed and alive. The attack animations are awesome, some bringing up these huge demon arms from the ground to destroy your enemies. At later levels, the Necro can change forms. A demonic transformation that allows you to do a ton of damage, or an angelic healing form that allows the necro to heal everyone with a large AoE healing skill. If you are stuck between choosing a DPS class or support, this class is for you, as it allows you to DPS while buffing your allies and debuffing your enemies. On to the Light Blader. If you are into melee classes and swords, this will probably be your main. Using dual blades and a great sword, the Light Blader is one of the best DPS classes out there very bursty and rumored to be one of the best PvP classes. The Light Blader can also change stances and swap between defensive and offensive mode. Using its great sword to knock down enemies and spinning like a Beyblade to do a ton of damage, the Light Blader also has a block and dash that can get him out of attacks and give him a barrier for a few seconds. One of the Blader's special skills allows it to hurl a cyclone at enemies pulling them together and damaging them while they remain inside or near it. This class also has a few skills to prevent certain enemy status effects. This is your up close and personal class next to the Vanguard. The Gunslinger is your long range physical damage class. This class has a high DPS in different forms of attacks from machine guns, turrets, auto lock sniper shots, and dual pistols. The gunner can even summon machines to increase its DPS and fight alongside it. As someone who doesn't really favor ranged classes, I had a lot of fun while trying this one. The gunner also has a form of crowd control. However, this can be a bit annoying during party play as it can lock your allies in with the enemy. The last class choice you have is the Spirit Shaper, also known as the Summoner. The Summoner is the main healing class of the game. It's best for protecting and aiding allies, but does have good long range magic damage abilities. The Spirit Shaper summons different animals from dolphins that splash up from the ground to giant snakes for CC. The Summoner also has the ability to transform its enemies into different animals. A dog, a goose, a cat. This class is one big zoo. Putting up barriers, resurrecting allies, and healing the whole party. Depending on the role you like to play in MMOs, you shouldn't really have to question if the Spirit Shaper is the class for you. This class and the Vanguard will be in high demand for LFGs and guilds. So now that you know the playstyle of each class, which one are you going to choose? Remember that you control the character from the base stats to the special skills you decide to use. You don't have to run with the typical or recommended builds. Take advantage and do something unique. So let me know how you guys feel about these classes. I'm looking forward to your comments and playing with you guys this fall. I'll catch you all in the next video. See you soon, friends.